for Tricks of the Trade. Good morning. You're listening to 93.1 and 101.5 in Jackson and Madison County, Tennessee. John Allen is our host today. As always, the show is presented by the West Tennessee Fence Company and Economy Siding and Windows. Not only can you get us here on the radio, but check us out online at y'all, Y-A-L-L, Dot com. Now, here's John Allen. Morning, Jim. How I, are you? I'm good, man. Look at that sun coming through I, the window. I, it's blinding. I thought I might have to bring the <laughs> shades in today. Or, it's, it's different. Well, they don't have a shade over there. so. No, we took it down. So we yeah. Actually... Kind of nice out there now today. I, now I can report on the weather having actually seen it. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, I right. tell you. I, I like it kind of cool like this and oh, sunshiny. Yeah. And it doesn't melt you candies when you have your easter egg hunt this weekend this is true yeah we got a, a big one coming up over to aldersgate our church uh sure does. this afternoon as a matter of fact yeah there ain't nothing worse than a melted snicker bar <laughs> <laughs> on the asphalt <laughs> this is true and the little ants just getting all over oh the i remember one year we had an easter egg hunt and uh and and yeah we had ants they were getting all everywhere because it was extremely hot and humid yep. that day and they were just coming out. What's your favorite Easter candy? Oh, without, without a doubt. What I always loved to find in, in my Easter basket when I was a kid was an 8-ounce, uh, not solid, but an 8-ounce hollow milk chocolate bunny rabbit. Really? Yeah. Hollow? I, yeah. Here's why. Because uh-huh. we'd, we'd put him in the freezer for a little while, and then we'd get him out, and we'd drop the box and eat the bunny fragments. Oh. <laughs> I know. We were weird. <laughs> Okay, what was the first bite, tail or ears? Ears. Of course, yeah. always. Oh, yeah, got to get the ears first. Yeah. Had to get the ears. Well, get it, the, you know, it's kind of like eating a crawdad. You go for the sweet meat first. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we need to remind everybody the Victory Honda text line is open, ready for you. This show is nothing without you, the callers and texters. 731-410-7560. Call us. We would love to talk to you today at uh, 731-891-6161. It's that easy, and uh, we can make it happen for you. So give us a call. John brought in a basket full of goodies today, including a brick (laughs) or two. Are we doing a little well, patchwork? Well, it, I'm I'm always one brick shy of a load, well, you know. Yeah, so yeah, you and me both, man. But you, uh, you know that we we got lots of little things to talk about this morning, and uh, so we got we got an hour hour full of stuff here. But yep. you know, with the sun out and things looking as nice as they are, people have been opening up the doors and the windows, and uh, you have to patch a screen every now and then. Yep. And uh, there's, there's nothing more aggravating than to have a screen and, and you got a little hole in it with little critters crawl through it and all that. Yep. So, you know, I tell people, you know, I say, well, you don't have to replace the whole screen just because you got just a little tiny hole in it. And they kind of look at me funny like, you know, well, what can you do? And I said, well, you, you can patch it. And if it's a little hole, if you've got some fingernail polish, you can go in there and kind of glaze over that little tiny hole. Right. Or if you've got a split or a small split, you can go in there and smear just a little bit of, of a silicone on it, and you can glaze it over. Or if you've got a bigger hole or something, a quarter, half dollar, something like that, you can get another uh, piece of screen and literally stick it on top of it with a little uh, silicone. It may not look the prettiest in the world, but it, if you're not ready to go out and get a whole new screen window, yeah. uh, it, it's it's a good, easy way to patch. Yeah. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, you could have just jerked that whole screen assembly down and taken it downtown to the Miracle Weavers. <laughs> they, could, they could make a pair of pants look brand new. <laughs> well, they could. I mean, and, and it's so easy to change a screen out. Uh, people don't realize it that. looks hard though look because you don't have anything to hook it to that's visible well that that's one of my little toys i have oh this really point. okay yeah. you see uh, just about all screens on modern windows uh today are little metal hollow framework you yeah. know metal and and uh you'll see a screen in there and on the back side of that screen you'll see what looks like a little bitty rope it's kind of shoved in a groove, yeah. and that's what holds the screen in. So if you got your pair of needle-nose pliers, 
and you can pull out uh, that little uh, rubber rope that runs around the screen, right. your screen will come right out. And then if you get another screen and lay it in there, you'll do one side first, but you got to get that little rubber rope back in there. So all you got, you start to thinking, and what can you do to push that in with? And most everybody will grab a screwdriver. Yeah. And they'll use that to kind of poke things in place. And then the next thing you know, uh, you'll be poking a hole in your screen ah. or ripping it. But they have a little tool made for that called a spline roller. I've heard that term. And that's what this little rascal is right here. It's just a little wheel, and it you you push the little rope down in the groove and then just run that along, and it uh, rolls it and pushes it right in. Yeah. And once you do one side, then you get over on the other side with the the excess area of screen sticking out where you can grab it with your fingers. Right. Kind of pull it a little taut, careful not to bow in your frame, and then run that uh, spline roller right down the edge again, and it keeps it kind of taut, and then you do your top and your bottom. Uh-huh. So, and when you get everything put in there, then you trim it with a razor blade or, or a pair of scissors or something like that that uh, cuts real close. Don't try to cut your screen exactly where you want it first time around because you'll never get it right. You don't have any way to grab it and pull it taut. Yeah. So uh, just get you a little a little $3 plastic uh, spline roller. And uh, this one's probably 40 years old, maybe more. <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, it's not that old. The original one I had was metal. This that's, is that's plastic. Yeah. Plastic. Yeah. Well, I'm but, glad to uh, know what that was because I saw it laying over there a while ago, and I was I was feeling sorry for you because I thought you'd broken your skateboard or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is um, it. It could have been a skateboard at one time, but you know, that's I use my roller skates to make my skateboard. There you go, absolutely. You know, right, absolutely. You know. That and the peach crate. That's all you needed, right? You know. Yep. And then and then there's a another little two little little uh, thing I've talked about on the show, and people wonder you know i'm not sure i know what that is and and i i tell folks uh, if, if you're putting in a faucet and always go back with a braided supply line yes uh, i know we're going to jump around a little bit with various different things this morning but there we've seen back in the day when when we kind of got modern plumbing and all that stuff and you actually had a supply line that went up to your faucet most all of them were copper tubes three-eighths copper tubes and you would put little ferrules on those tubes and and a a nut and attach it to your stop or your cutoff right well they always leaked they leak you you bump them they leak and 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 there's problems all the time then they came out with these little plastic supply lines little pvc gray supply lines yep. everybody thought that was great you know until they wasn't <laughs> uh, because as they got old they got brittle and uh, it never failed if you decided to go on vacation or go to granny's house on the weekend or whatever the situation might be uh, that thing would blow loose and oh, yeah. you'd come home with water <clears throat> running out your front door <laughs> So if if I get called out on a job and it's a leaky supply line, I will never put one of those plastic supply lines back on. And copper's outdated now. You don't have to to do that. I tell everybody to get a braided supply line. And uh, this is a braided supply line. And uh, it's very flexible. It's braided in stainless steel. And the... The, the thing about this is, you know, it's it's flexible. They're long. If it's short, you can just loop it around and go right back up to where you are. But the ingenious thing about it is, is they've got little seals into them here that uh, little rubber seals. You don't have to put the pipe dope and all that stuff on them. Well, all you good. do is go down and screw it. Well, in this case, it's the little end, the three eight. <laughs> You'll screw this down. Uh, on your stop and then this side will go up against the faucet and you'll screw it up and you don't have to bear down on it to get it real real tight like you did with copper right 
Uh, this little rubber gasket in here kind of does the thinking for you. You get it good and snug, and you've got a supply line that will last you until Cooter comes home. You know, yeah. it's yeah. uh, a long, long time, and uh, very inexpensive. You know, five bucks. And you've got one that uh, will do the trick. And if you get a hot, you get a cold. And uh, and the, they also make these, and I really like to promote these uh, for washer washing machines. Uh, the hose on your washing machine is probably the number two thing that causes your house to get flooded. They will always uh, burst when you're gone, and you'll have a stream of water shooting up, hitting the ceiling. But if you put a braided supply line on there and run that from the back of your washer into the cutoff, uh, you've got a permanent fix with very little money. A, a pair of braided washing machine hoses are less than 20 bucks, and you'll be able to uh, fix that and not have to worry about it. And things flooding next time you go to Granny's house, yeah, like on Easter weekend, exactly, like yeah. this weekend, yeah. Like now, so. why you why you talking about lines and supply lines? There's another one that always seemed to to break at just the wrong time, and it was a plastic one most of the time, and that's the one that hooks up to your ice maker on your refrigerator. Oh man, they they make now that's a smaller line than what you're talking about here for the yeah, most part. It's right? a quarter inch line. But they do make those in braided, don't they? They do, and uh, you're right now. I'm not a big fan of plastic supply lines going to the ice maker. Uh, they always are causing problems, and they'll rupture, and you, you don't you forget about those because you don't even see them. They're always behind everything. But they make this uh, braided material in a uh, supply line that will go to your ice machine, and uh, it's also a real good one to do. But if you can't do that, I tell people to stick with the copper. I just don't like the plastic. Yeah. Uh, too many things can go wrong when you don't know it. Yeah. It starts out as a dribble and then a squirt and then a stream and then a flood. <laughs> then a flood. <laughs> you know, I've noticed that, you know, pulling a thing out every now and then to, to clean behind it. But uh, even even if you put all the good stuff on there, the copper or the braided line on there, what is made into the back of the refrigerator from the bottom, you know, mine is at the bottom where it hooks in, that runs up to the ice maker or the uh, door thing that squirts your water and all that stuff, is plastic, so there's really no get. You can't get 100 percent away from it, can you? Oh no, they everything's cheap nowadays, yep. and and those tubes right there blow loose, and it it's just a problem. Yeah, absolutely, just a problem. So, absolutely. You know, that's just kind of one of the little things I wanted to share this morning. We got other things to share this morning, yes. and uh, we can talk about that, or we can talk about a few things around the house. And I uh, while we're sharing, let's share the phone number. What do you think? Why don't you do that? Yeah. I don't even know what they are. I can't remember. <laughs> I got them written down. That's why I remember I, them. I'm glad. Call us on the uh, talk line, 731-891-6161. That'll put you directly on the phone with John. And uh, you can do the text if that's what you'd rather do, 731, the Victory Honda text line, 731-410-7560. Bring it on in. It's 814 uh, or so. We need to hear from you this morning. Yeah, it'd be a good idea. You know, it's a beautiful weekend and Easter weekend. And yep. we're having Easter this year. We didn't last year. Say hallelujah. Oh, man, isn't that the truth? Yeah. It's just not. Nice. Everybody's getting excited. And yep. Churches are starting to open up a little bit. And I'm just happy to be sitting in the pew. <laughs> is it, is, is, uh, uh, back in the day when everybody wore hats, when men wore hats, was Easter was when you switched hats from your felt hat to your straw hat, was it not? That's exactly right. Yeah. And That's then, right. what's it, Labor Day? You go back the other way. We well, like the other way. Yeah. So my dad wore a hat. Oh, mine did too. And, Lord uh, have mercy. I used to wear a little hat too every now and then. And, and uh, I do in the winter when my head gets cold. That's true. You know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, hats were the thing oh, back yeah. then. Yeah. And uh, uh, kind of wish they'd bring them back. Yeah. You know, get the old fedora out there. And, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a, my dad's hat of choice back in those days was either a Dobbs or a, a Stetson. Stetson on the on the uh, felt hats, Dobbs with the uh, with the with the uh, straw hats. I went to a place that, and I've got to take it back and go there uh, up in Kentucky, where you could go in this store, and they cleaned your hat. Yeah. And it, it was a steamer, and you just set that hat down on it, and he pushed a little pedal down there, and it would poof. <laughs> and I mean, 
all the blood, the bu- not the blood, the mud. Well, in your case, would, maybe some. Well, blood. maybe mud for me, uh, mud, blood for me. You never know what happens. Those laughters to are bad on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it steams them and, and yeah. uh, shapes them and all that. Yeah, they, what they call that hat blocking, I think is what they call When they re, kind of reshape the hat is that and, what and clean it at the same time, yeah. I didn't know what they do, but that was a pretty little girl that rubbed her hands around the side to make the curl up a little bit on the edges. Yeah. Of your hat. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Yeah, that too. <laughs> oh. oh, me. So uh, when, when, when are we, we supposed to take a break this morning? Because yeah, I'm going to set right up now. some props. Oh, boy. We're going to have some fun here now. We uh, always do, but we're going to have some big fun now. Are we? Yeah, we are. Cause <laughs> well, it's totally you unrehearsed. Brought, you brought fun stuff with you, so we're going to have some fun with that. All right, we'll see what we can do. We'll be back in about two and a half minutes. Stay right there. At H&R Block, tax time is our favorite time of year. It's when our tax pros get to do what they love the most, help people. By getting to know you, they make sure your return gets done right. It's not just numbers, boxes, and forms. It's personal care, so you get every credit and deduction you deserve. With an average of 10 years' experience, our tax pros get your taxes done right. Just one of the many ways Block has your back. H&R Block, with six locations in West Tennessee, Dyersburg, Ripley, Humboldt, Martin, South Bolton, and Union City. Call 731-285-0749. Here at Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area of business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Foods said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. Attention Medicare recipients and anyone turning 65. Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to, including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home-delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available and it's a free call to enroll. The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare benefits line now. It's easy. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Not all Medicare Advantage plans are alike. The new plans have more benefits for many people. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. 800 747 1186. No matter what size, every business is unique and driven to improve results. What's right for one might not be right for you. It all depends on your business and your goals. Trying to grow revenue, focused on cutting costs, or simply need a better way to get work done? XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, can help. We offer exceptional Xerox products and are proud to provide cost-effective office equipment and electronic document management. Visit XMCINC.com and allow XMC to help boost productivity, enhance collaboration, and reduce costs at your office. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. And then 101.5, and back to John. Well, you know, everybody advertises everything nowadays as uh-huh. the so-called cure of the world. That's and right. I don't know if it works or not. Most of them don't. Uh, from well, from some, your experience some, that you have related yeah, to me. Yeah, I get tickled when I see commercials that you've got this guy on here that it's loud and obnoxious, <laughs> and and he's like maybe got a boat with a screen door in it and floating across the lake and said this product's going to cure everything, and I know he's going to drown during the next clip. There's no doubt about it. But, not that lucky. But anyway. He's gone now, that particular person. Oh, he's back. Have you not seen the new one? Is it his son or something? One no. of them died. Well, that one, yeah, I know that one you're talking about. But the guy with the uh, with the fix it all stuff that you oh yeah, yeah. That sm- that stuff you smear on yeah. yeah yeah he's back. Only this his new commercial. He's a giant. He's he's hawking their new giant sized tubs of this junk. Oh well, yeah. okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, Different guy. we'll yeah, you're right. Okay. We will disclose and uh, that a little later on on that little hoax. Yes, but anyway, there's a there's a product out that I absolutely know nothing about. Right. Zero. Zero. 
I don't know if it works or it doesn't work, but I just thought maybe we'll find out today. <laughs> it's a now, good, good a place the, as any. The opinions uh, that I am expressing are mine and mine alone. I don't yes. want to get sued. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. And if it works, hey, we'll praise it. Yeah. But if it don't, we'll expose it. Yeah. But there's a product that's just always caught my eye. I, I don't, I don't know anything about it. And it's and it's this stuff right here called uh, Alien Tape. <laughs> just the name intrigues me. Yeah. It it's uh, it's something. And I I figured that they didn't want me to know anything about it because when I first picked up the box and looked at it. It was in a alien language, <laughs> and then I realized I had to turn it around to get to the to get English. The English one, yes. So anyway, here we go. We got alien tape. Now I cracked the seal on this last night, right? Just to see what was in it. And the first thing that I pulled out is the paperwork. Now you would think you wouldn't need paperwork with tape, but the first thing I opened up and looked at was the arbitration agreement that's inside <laughs> of it. <laughs> Got to get the legal apparently, stuff out of the way first. Apparently they say, if anything is wrong with this, we don't want to go to the judge or the courtroom or anything else. We're yeah. going to have to arbitrate this, <laughs> which means it's going to be behind closed door. I'm not kidding. Here it is right here. This Man. is the arbitration so agreement. So if you use that stuff to put up a $3,000 chandelier and it falls in your turkey yeah. dressing, they're yeah. going to keep it behind closed doors. Huh? Now, then we, we opened it up. Now, I've got three little rolls of this stuff here. Okay. And Al already it looks smaller than it did on television. Yeah. Well, you've got, it It says here that it is uh, sealed up, which I don't know if I can even open this this morning. Uh, it, it's here somewhere. And we're going to open it up. That's, there we go. Hey, we're here. That's a good bag anyway. It's a good bag. I could put my ham sandwich in that after a while. <laughs> but uh, so then here we go. We got some alien tape. There it we're, is. Oh, man. We're going to open it up here. It's got all kinds of stuff on it. And uh, the way this works, it says, as you look at the commercial, uh -huh. uh, it'll hold up anything. Yep. And uh, you literally just... Uh, Peel it off, which we're going to do right here. And uh, we're going to just kind of take it easy. So I'm going to, this, this stuff's about an eighth of an inch thick. So I'm going to cut a piece of it right here. And uh, they say, stick it to a surface. Well, I got, I got two blocks of wood right here because it says on the box it'll stick to wood. Yes. So now this is sticky. This is that. This feels like this stuff that you you buy in the tub for mouses to walk across, and yeah. they stick in it. Yeah. And uh huh. They get their little legs. Yeah. Sticky, caught. sticky pads. But, but you stick it on, and so I'm gonna stick it on this piece of wood right here. Okay. It's two sided, is it not? It's two sided tape. Yeah. And I'm stick. I can't get it off my <laughs> fingers here. So. All right, we got trouble already. Trouble right here I in Rivers City. I can't even get it off my finger. <laughs> so anyway, I got it stuck on a block of wood. Right. Now I got another block of wood here. So we're going to slap these together okay. and see what happens. So I'm going to give it the benefit of a doubt. I'm going to just put them together right there. And squish it. I'm going to squish it, and I'm going to pat it down. Ooh, I saw it move. That's not a good sign. And and they and they said on that instructions you need to wiggle it, you know, position it like that, yeah. you know. All right. So now we got two pieces stuck together. Now I see a little gap right here between the woods. I don't guess that matters. Get the caulking. It, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna do it right now. It, we'll, we are stuck together. Mm -hmm. And uh oh. Oh, look at there. Uh oh. Well, that wasn't too much effort, but it was stuck. It was stuck momentarily. Now, it says you can do it again. Yeah, it says so, you can wash it and, and use it over yeah. again. So I pulled it loose. I've stuck it together. And uh, it didn't stick as well this it time. It don't stick too good. 
Now, it said don't put it on a surface because it may ruin the surface because <laughs> you can't pull it off. <laughs> what? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can roll this up. It's kind of rubbery, you know. Yeah. It's kind of. It, anyway. it looks. It looks kind of gooey. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Now, uh, See, it stretches like that stuff on the backside of a command hook. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but the command hooks, for the most part, work if you well, use the well, right sometimes. one. Yeah. Anyway, we uh, we got a piece of it off here. Now, uh, I don't know if I can reuse that or not, but I do know it's not sticky anymore. Right. I can. Uh, it doesn't stick to my fingers like it did before. But they uh, they said you can wash that and it yeah. reactivates the sticky. Yeah, you just rinse it off according to the commercial. Yeah. So all right. So well, it stuck to my warranty papers here. So <laughs> I've just lost my arbitration <laughs> oh, agreement. No. All right. So now we're going we're going to try something else here. We're gonna now we we notice that when I go to pull this off, it's got a piece of cellophane that's on here, and. Uh, Where's my cameraman? There you go. Here we go. So we're gonna we're gonna stick another piece on here and make sure I got things going here. So we're gonna stick that down, and then I'm gonna pull. If I can get my fingers to oper cooperate, we're gonna pull the sticky side off. Now it says. It sticks. The, the, the commercials, what got me was this guy was taking a weight. Yeah. These round dumbbell yeah, like, weights yeah, like or something. Weightlifting weights. And yeah. sticking them on. And I said, and they, they appeared to be about 10 pounds a piece. So, mm -hmm. I brought a brick from the house. There you go. And I'm going to take this brick and I'm going to stick it on here and I'm going to see if it works. Okay. So, we're going we're gonna to just go like that. All right, that'll work. All right, now we're stuck on there, and uh oh, it come off. Oh no! I ain't supposed to do that. Well, see, you see, on the commercial now, one of the things they do is they take they take a uh, a house number and stick it on a brick wall. And I it know, just, it's but it, I can't good. even get the wood to. That's what I figured. Oh, now look at that! It's coming off. <laughs> it's coming off of the wood side of it. Huh. I think your wood's defective. Maybe that's what that's probably what would come out in the arbitration agreement <laughs> exactly. that the wood was defective. The brick is is defective. It needed to be cleaned properly. Now, now that ain't right. It ain't supposed to do that. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna try something else here. Okay. Maybe I have two dissimilar surfaces. Now it's sticking to everything else on my table well, right here. There goes my instructions. It's stuck to my arbitration Careful agreement. Careful, you get again. your root beer stuck to it. Yeah. It. it uh, let's see what we got here. We're gonna we're gonna see if a brick will stick to a brick. So I'm gonna cut me some more off. We need we need to get in on the on the bedding line on this. We can make a little money. Yeah. And uh, now I, I didn't jinx this. I cleaned this brick last night. This brick had been in my house for years, covered with uh, aluminum foil. Because it held up the hit the headboard in my bed where I could sleep a little. <laughs> now, I uh, I used to have two bricks at the head of my bed. Right. But I had to take one out because the wife kept sliding off the end of the bed. <laughs> okay. Uh, boom, boom. So, <laughs> seriously. Folks. All right. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna put this on a on a brick again. All right. Yep. And here we go. This is al off. alien tape, folks. This, That's yeah, what we're this, watching here. Yeah, this, here we go. Now, we got another brick. Now, it's, it's been cleaned, and it's all good, so we're going we're gonna to stick right there. Yep. That don't work. Are we? Are we going to? Oh, man. It, Bummer. Yeah. This is a hoax. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a number we can call on that arbitration paper? <laughs> there might have been one, but I think I just pulled the face of it off with alien tape. Oh, have mercy! Uh, 
so folks, I don't understand this. This is totally live. I didn't know what was going to happen, yeah. but I can't get nothing to stick to my alien type. Well, so and much for him so, seen on, on TV. And now so I can't won't even pick get, up the wood. Now it won't pick up my wood. So I'm not too sure about this. Uh, I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but maybe I just wasted my fourteen dollars. Fourteen dollars. What five dollars a roll there about? I, I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna see what happens here, but I don't know. I'm probably gonna get a phone call from some attorney over this, so we're just gonna put it all over here to the side. Hey. And next week, rather than do all of these uh new things that they want you to buy. Yeah. I'm going to bring a display up here on different kinds of anchors to uh, use for different surfaces. Okay. So we're going to we're going to uh take dissimilar things and and did go. my alien tape mess up my microphone? Yeah, it just slipped a little. Oh, there. well, that that happens sometimes. So uh I got a mess right here, but uh Hey, you want to you show a trick of the trade in the radio business? What's that? You got a dime in your pocket. What's that? You got a dime in your pocket? I probably do. You can tighten that little screw up with a dime right there, and it won't droop on you like it did again. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That, that is the extent of my technical knowledge right there. Oh, well, all right. Well, <laughs> we're going to send this alien tape back to it. Back to whatever planet it came from. Yeah, the, the another, another place. And we'll clean up the displays later, and we're going to get to... Next week we're gonna. That says I can put that under a. Oh yeah, under the water. Water and uh -huh. do it again. Reactivate it. I don't know why I want to, but anyway, there we go. Okay. So we're gonna put that aside, and uh, now you know all I know about alien tape. Right. So and we'll we'll see what there, happens. Uh, that's as and it said. may have its use somewhere, and and it may be just fine, but yep. it didn't stick to what I wanted to do. So my disclaimer is. My my demonstration only dealt with what I was sticking it to. There may be good practical uses for that. Yep. But I was going to come up here and try to hang a chair on the wall, or I was going <laughs> to uh, see how many pieces of alien tape it would take to stick you to the wall. But it won't even hold up a brick, so nope. w nobody's going to get hurt in this. This so is true. No this, animals were hurt during the No animals were hurt <laughs> in the portraying of this demonstration. <laughs> So <laughs> <laughs> that take care of PETA. We won't get a call from them anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, well, I'm disappointed. I, you know, I was expecting some miraculous thing, I but was, I should know better by now. I, I was really wanting to. Uh, I need to save that arbitration agreement. I may need it before this show is over with. But oh, anyway. have mercy! Have mercy! Uh, let, let, we got some other little things. Uh, yeah, before you go into that, if you don't mind, let, let's let's talk about something that does work. What's that? A fence put up by West End Fence Company. Now you're on to something. Yes. You know, no gimmicks, <clears throat> no no stuff to to make it sound better than what it is. Right. It, it is what it is. It they is uh, it is. West End does a great job in putting up fences. Any kind of fence you want, they're 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 plumb, yep, and they're straight and they're Everything you need in a fence and uh, securely put in the ground. Yep. Any kind of fence you want. I highly recommend those folks, and I do that because I use them myself, so I can speak for them personally. If you want a fence, uh, you know, wood fence, cyclone, chain link fence, wrought iron fence. I probably guess they'd put up a barbed wire fence if you want them to, to keep your neighbor the, out. They do the vinyl fencing. They. I would imagine they would if if yeah, they there fence. It is. There yeah. it is right there. P it's, PVC, aluminum, and composite vinyl and wood. Yeah. 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 Well, they do all that. Yeah. So, and they're local, and uh, they got their own people, and uh, most of them speak uh, English. Yeah. That yeah. you can talk to them. Yep. And uh, so that that's a good thing. Give those people a call and and uh, just just don't go out and make the mistake a lot of people do and buy this prefabricated sectional fencing yeah. and expect it to last with a little with a little bitty brads or whatever oh, the yeah. staples that they oh, use to put yeah. together with yeah. you know the, these you buy these wood wood panels you buy they got these brads in them and you stick them up and first time the wind blows they they're stuck in the side of your neighbor's vinyl house over here <laughs> yeah. so uh yeah. but give the guys a, a call yeah. uh west end fence company uh 
I use them, everybody else use them, and all good fences have their little label on the side of it yeah, around town. Yes, so give them do. a call. Absolutely. You can call them at 731-668-5959, located on Hollywood Drive, 2158 to be exact, or by email. You can email Ricky Pennington for sales, rpennington1, the number one, at yahoo.com. There you go. One of our great sponsors here. That's we appreciate right. them yeah. being with us every week. Yeah, we'll talk about the other one later on. And, and uh, have we got to take another one of those breaks or something? Yeah, or? why don't we do that? We've got uh, we got two more we got to do before the morning's over. So let's take about another two and a half right now. We'll be right back with more of Tricks of the Trade. I'm Tate. I'm the director of bands at Gibson County High School in Dyer, Tennessee. I'm one of five band directors that make up the Gibson County Mass Band that will be participating in the 2022 Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California. This trip simply would not be possible without you. We need your help. Visit roses2022.com to make your donation today. Sakura set the standard in West Tennessee for Japanese sushi rolls and hibachi grill dishes. By popular demand, Sakura added a Chinese menu. For starters, egg drop and hot and sour soup. Entrees include chicken broccoli, sweet and sour chicken, Mongolian beef, and lo mein with your choice of meat. Our Chinese lunch menu starts at just $7.95. Sakura also delivers to your home or business, or you can call ahead for pickup at 664-2878. Sakura's dining area now open and serving at 50% capacity. Sakura on Carriage House Drive. Here at Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. I don't feel like I'm 23 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire, and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and release bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advanced Rehab and Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. It's a Saturday. It is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Six, uh, not six, seven, three, one, eight, nine, one, six, one, six, one is the call in number this morning. Victory Honda text line 731 410 7560. And pick up your device, your cell phone, your tablet, your, uh, your surface, whatever the case may be. And check us out right now. We are live on y'all, Y A L L dot com. Let's do some more. Well, uh, in my line of work, construction, we're always needing temporary lights. Yeah. And. Uh, I'm just kind of one of these guys. I don't have to go buy every little gadget there is. I try to use what I got and make it work. And I learned about a little little uh, temporary light device many, 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 many years ago. It was called a pigtail. Oh. And that's what this is right here. And uh, it's just a place that you can screw your light bulb into the end of it. Right. And you attach your positive and your negative to your, your cords. And you can put anywhere from a 60 to a 300-watt bulb in this thing and, and get all the light you want. But as I've, I've mentioned before, I was very fortunate in my life to uh, have an older, retired electrician 
teach me the trade back when I was a teenager. And I never saw him with a meter, right? Uh, an electric meter. Everybody had the fancy gadgets, but old Porter only had one thing stuck under his belt loop for his electrical tester. And he had taken two of these pigtails and wired them in series and made a contraption like this. Oh. Now, this is mine, the one that I made for me that I used for many, many, many years. And it's an electrical tester. Uh, it, I took two sockets and I wired them in series and then I taped them together and put two little 40 watt bulbs in it. Okay. And then because it, it was stranded on the end of the pigtail, I attached a solid piece of wire. That way I could put them into an outlet to test it out. Uh -huh. Now, what this does is tells you two things. It tells you if you have power or not, and if it's a 120-volt plug-in or if it's a 220 plug-in. Because if I were to stick this into a standard wall outlet, these bulbs would only be half lit. They would be kind of dim. But if I stuck this into, say, a dryer outlet, I'd get the full brightness out of it. So depending upon whether it was dim or bright, you knew if it was 220 or 110. Okay. Now we got one of those styrofoam questions again. How does it know? Because it's in series. So if you are putting something in series, yeah. you're only getting half the juice. I in there. I see. So it's a very simple, ingenious way. Uh, if I had a third one, it yeah. would make these even dimmer. Huh. However, if I hooked them all up parallel to where all the blacks were tied together and all the whites were tied together, right. they would all be bright. But if you put them in series, the longer the string is of lights, the dimmer they get going along the line. Makes sense. So if I've got two of them taped together, and this is strictly all homemade, folks, uh, but that I use that as an electrical tester before I had enough money together that I could <laughs> I could buy a real one. <laughs> but I still can use this. I, I keep yep. this one in my shop because if uh, if I've tripped a breaker, and uh, this was really handy when you had fuses yeah, because you couldn't just look to see if a fuse was blown necessarily or which one it was. Yeah. So you would test your circuit and that would tell you if you wasn't getting power there and these were not lit, um, uh, you go check your fuses after that where now you just, you know, flip a breaker and right. you can tell right off the bat what's good and what's bad. But that is my original circuit tester. Hey, it's cool. And uh, it, it's the real deal, and uh, I'm really thankful for that because it didn't take a whole lot of sense to see how that operates. I mean, there's no parts to break. Well, you may blow a bulb every now and then. Yeah. You just screw another one in there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that that's just something that if you showed one of these to a young person right now, uh -huh. you'd get one of those do-what looks. Yeah, like where's the rest of the lamp? Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> and, and there's got to be, you know, something more fancy uh about that but uh anyway very basic very simple and it will get the job done it's like our texter said last week you know his 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 theory the old kiss method keep it simple <laughs> stupid yeah oh jimmy i got in trouble last night you said kiss I d you know, please no, elaborate no no, no. <laughs> yeah okay i i was out yes this true story I went out yesterday, and uh, I had to patch a piece of sheetrock. Okay. Now, I've, I've told this premise, but this happened last night. Yeah. I had to patch a piece of sheetrock that had an electrical outlet in it. And I've said this on the show before, that I keep a tube of lipstick in my truck. Right. But not for what you think. <laughs> And it belonged to me, and it belongs to nobody else. That's right. <laughs> but I pulled out my uh, little tube of red lipstick, and I took it inside, and I went around the 
front edge of that electrical box that was sticking out of the wall. And then I laid my piece of sheetrock up next to it. It was just a, a small patch I was putting it in. Right. And the lipstick being on the edge of that box, when I pushed the sheetrock up to it, made a perfect red imprint. Sure. So then I took it outside, took my little keyhole saw, and I cut it out, brought it back in, screwed it, finished my job, everything's fine. Except last night, I was going to Olive Garden with the grandkids. Yep. And uh, wife had been shopping, imagine that. Ooh. Earlier in the day, the car was full of non-essential things. <laughs> so we decided to go in my truck last night. So here we are, me, her, and the grandkids. And when she sat down and looked in my cup holder, there was a tube of lipstick. Oh, boy. And she picked it up and looked at it. You want to explain this? <laughs> I said, yes, I've been smooching today. And she got beat red. <laughs> and who have you been smooching with? I said a piece of half inch sheet rock that's in the other half of it's in the back of my <laughs> truck. And I had to explain that because she had forgot my smooching story. So that's yep. my story. I'm sticking with it. Exactly, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, but you know, you know uh, once, once they find that in the glove box, you got to keep it there, you know, because you, you, you got the excuse. Well, I mean, I, I'm a little weird sometimes, but I do have, <laughs> I do have a, Tube of lipstick and an old pair of pantyhose in my truck all the time. <laughs> and I know what those are for, too. Yeah. It has nothing to do with keeping your legs warm. That's right. That's true. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. But, you know, that's a story for another day. But <laughs> but anyway, that came up last night, and it was like, oh, I'm in trouble now. But, yeah. uh, that's, yeah. but that's true. That's just I use that a lot. So it you'll find that in my toolbox. So. <laughs> So anyway, let's see. We we got some other things we can get into this morning. Yep. Uh, while I'm on electrical stuff, I want to tell you about something else. Uh, I've had to rewire a couple of lamps this week. Okay. And a, a lamp wire is it's just a two conductor wire. Here's a piece of it right here. Okay. Everybody sees it. Brown wire. It's got two wires in it. And you go to hook it up to your uh, light socket, and uh, you uh, kind of stop to think because people are always making sure you get the right wire on the right screw. Yeah. Well, bet you didn't know it, but if you looked real close to this wire right here, if you split it open like I have done, one side of this has got ribs on it. And the other side doesn't. Now, the average person wouldn't even look at that and know. But when you look at it, the ribbed side is your ground wire. And that goes on the silver tab on your light socket. Okay. And then the other one goes on the copper. Well, this is a stranded piece of wire. And, of course, you got to strip it. Now, most people would probably take their pocket knife and they would just kind of press it on it a little bit. And then pull it off. Yeah. But when you do that, you break a lot of those little strands and you reduce the power capacity of that wire. And uh, some people have been known to almost cut them through and the next thing you know, your wire is burning off and you got a problem. But back when wiring first started out, we had the old knob and tube wiring. You, you got what was called a, a stripper. And uh, I'm talking about a, a device now, not a person. <laughs> and this is a set of strippers that I started out with many, many years ago. And if you look at it real close, it's got two little crimps on it right here. One that the wire goes in. And if I close it up, it's got different gauges of wire on it. The other side is what holds the cable. So if you watch me squeeze this, it comes down first and holds the cable. Right. The other side cuts into the wire. So here I've got a 18-gauge uh, wire, 
and I will stick it in here and I will put it on the 18 gauge side of the thing and you see it crimped in here and then it's holding it in place and all I got to do is pull it and I have got a perfectly stripped wire with none of the strands of the wire cut off. So then all I've got to do is twist it a little bit and I'm ready to put a little hook on it like so and put it on my terminal. But uh, you don't find many people that use these anymore. And of course, these are quite intricate. They've got a lot of gears and springs, but this is some of the original wire strippers that you used to have years ago. And it went anywhere from uh, 20 gauge wire to 10 gauge wire. You just put it in the correct slot and you squeeze it and pull it and You're there done. you go. Man. But you don't see many people use those. And these are just some of the old tools that I like to pull out every now and then and just use them just to where I kind of keep handy on, on how to do them. There you go. And, uh, I that's, like, that's cool. I've never seen one quite like that. Yeah, but yeah. That, that's one I like, used to use. Now, yeah. there's another thing that I'm going to ask you, Jim, if you even know what it is. And, uh, well, let's go ahead and talk about our little sponsor because yeah, actually what I'm going to show you is something you might could use with some of his products. Okay, we're talking about uh, Stormy. Stormy, yeah. yeah. Stormy with economy siding. Right. Uh, Stormy, he's, he's busy. He is Bless busy. his heart. <laughs> he just, I, I've been fussing at him this week because he didn't answer my phone call quick yeah. enough. It went to voicemail. Oh, yeah. Because he's out here putting on siding and gutters and windows and all that stuff. And he didn't have a third arm to answer his phone. <laughs> the, the other two was putting up products. But, you know, I talk about him and we cut up. He's a good friend. He's a good guy. Yep. he got a very talented crew and he's got a very good business that if you use him, you don't have to worry about him. Because he, these guys come out. They're, they're polite. They're neat. They look like professionals. They get in there. They get the job done. So... If you uh, have any vinyl siding needs, or if you have any gutter needs, or uh, need your windows trimmed out, have some premium vinyl windows to put up that uh, repel the water like they're supposed to, unlike some of the other people out here saying they're putting in windows, uh, give them a call. He'll uh, he'll come out and do you right and, and get things taken care of. So I highly recommend and proud that they are a sponsor of the show is Economy Siding and Gutter. You got it. 731-422-3828 or economysiding.com. Mm. All right. Now, what you got that might be handy there? All right. Jim, do you know what this is? Looks like a catalytic converter off a of 38 Plymouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a clue. This is a old, 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 old. nail puller. What? This is what you pulled your nails with. Oh no, I don't. I don't believe I've now, ever this, seen one. Of them. I mean, you can't buy one of these anymore. <laughs> and uh, I should have actually driven a nail in one of these blocks I had over here for the alien tape, but I expected it to be stuck to the brick and couldn't use it. But <laughs> anyway, what you do with this? And um, I'm going to ask John if he'll kind of get his camera over here on the countertop and I'm going to show him kind of how it worked. Okay. But let's just assume you had a nail right there on the countertop. On the countertop. Okay. And this thing, it's got little pinchers on the end of it. Okay. You would put this down on the nail and get it on the head. Now, you'll say, well, you can't grab it. Well, you're not supposed to just yet. That's what the top part's for. So you grab it like this, and you went like that. Okay. And that drove that down in around each side of the nail. And then all you had to do was do that, and it would crimp it. Yeah, it's got its own And little, roll it right back up and pull a nail out. Got its own little lever hooked on to it. It's got it? that yeah. little lever on it. Yeah. So you, you literally you didn't have to have a hammer. It had its own built-in hammer. It would pop down on it and roll it off and you could pull anything from a finished nail to bridge timber nails and wow. uh and take care of that these are things you don't uh how old is find. that 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 come out of the 40s maybe oh no this is way before way before. before that this is actually it's written on the side here crescent tool company 
Jamestown, New York, USA. This is probably worth a lot of money. Yep. But um, back when Crescent did various kinds of tools, not just the Crescent wrench that right. we all have in our toolbox, but uh, this is a real old tool, and this belonged to my grandfather, and uh, he gave it to me, and I've used it many, many times. It's a little heavy. It's a little cumbersome. It weighs a good five pounds. It looks like it does. But uh, it, I keep it around just for nostalgic reasons, and every once in a while, if I'm out uh, working on a on a fence post, for instance, and it doesn't matter if you kind of booger up the wood a little bit because this will kind of yeah. uh, dig down in your wood and make a bad spot on it. But if you're working with framing, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, this this is a good little thing because it'll flat grab the head of a nail and you can pull it out and you don't have to be digging in on it. Man, that's, that is, that's amazing. I, I know I have never seen one of those. Another thing that uh, I want to get to. Okay, we got uh, we got about uh, three minutes left. Well, this but, is a oh, I've folding. Got, I've got one of those. You, you just. I just hit John's People, we did not have an earthquake. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a folding carpenter's rule yep. now this is what every carpenter used to have you simply just folded it out yep. it is six foot long and every time he measured whatever he wanted he'd fold it right back up stick it in his apron right now if you were measuring something on the inside it had a neat little device here on it the the last little six inches here had a little brass slide rule in it that would slide in and out where you could get an inside measurement. Now, all carpenters had these. This was before they had the aluminum tapes that everybody yeah. uses right now. But I keep this around. This is, uh, you took a little training to use one of these because you've got all the little hash marks on here for 16th of an inch and yep. eighth of an inch, and you had to know what each one of them used, uh, was meant for. But there were other uses of the tape, especially at break time. Okay. Because when you would fold this up and you'd go get your Coca-Cola. Uh-huh. Now, I don't have a Coca-Cola with me right now, but I borrowed one of these from the display over here. Okay. But you would take this, and you see this short side of the ruler. You yeah. take it and put it right under your, your cap yeah. like I got here. And all you did is do pop that with your wrist, and it pops that cap off. Whoa. And doesn't break the glass or anything like that. So it's kind of a built-in can opener, but they wouldn't tell you that in the instruction <laughs> sheet. No, that's but a, that's uh, another, everybody did that. That's amazing. And the last thing I got that's becoming an antique the is hammer. a hammer. Yep. Now, this is the hammer I started business with. Is it and really? you can tell it's pretty worn. Yep. And, uh, but, but, uh, you know, you actually drove nails with this uh -huh. and people can still do that and pull nails with it. That's right. And you can pull nails with it and you can drive nails with one hand with this Yep. and not have to hold the nail with the other. And I'll demonstrate that one time. I just don't have one with me right okay. now, but this also was used a lot in break time because you always went and got your Coca-Cola like yep. this. And you'd grab it by the neck yep. like this, uh -huh. and you take your hammer like that, and get under it, and pop, pop it up, and pop your top off. You didn't have to have a can of. Now you know I'm gonna have to try that when I get home. Well, I mean that's fine. You 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 do it now. Don't cut yourself. It takes experience to know how to do that. <laughs> well, but, uh, probably all I've got is, is screw off plastic caps now. Well, that, that that's would, just that it. Work. You know, you give a you give a, a youngster a, a bottle top now and ask them. To, they go to try to twist it off and do all of that, and you you can't do it anymore. Yep. yep. So. Anyway, that, now that 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 is helpful hints right there. Now, so I've that, had my show and tell today. Yeah, you can trick to the trade for real, for real. Hey, they're playing music, which means I got to shut up and get out of here. Yeah, that's all I right. I got things to do and get ready for the bunny rabbit. Hope everybody has a great Easter weekend. Yep. Go to church. Get back in the get ritual in of the going to church. Thing. Sit down and find out what it's all about. It's yeah. it's not just bunny rabbits and candy. Not hard. And uh, so. Uh, enjoy yourself, have a little family time, and I'll see you next Saturday morning at 8 o'clock for Tricks of the Trade. You got it. Have a good weekend, folks.